go. <laughs> All right. Ah, oh, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> Today, I want to explore how prayer works, how prayer works. In our unity tradition, one of our first key principles is thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. You've probably heard that many times in, in this unity tradition. If you think about it, everything in the material world is a thought form, a thought form. It was first a thought, and it was thought of either in the unlimited mind of God or in the mind of a human being that's made in the image and likeness of God. And so that thought became form. When you contemplate what is the mind of God, what is the mind of God, it is a very great mystery. It is a mysterious thing. It's something hard to comprehend from an ordinary state of mind. But when we learn about how our brain works and about how meditation and visualization and intentional practice take us into an expansive state of mind, we're able to tap into and to be a conscious part of and create from an unlimited mind of God, the unlimited mind of, you could say, supreme consciousness. You know, think about it. When we marvel at the magnificence of the natural world, we're marveling at what came out of the mind of God, what came out of supreme consciousness, what began as a thought. So, for example, think of a flower. Um, think of a big, deliciously fragrant Casablanca lily, a white Casablanca lily, my favorite flower in the world. Their fragrance is heavenly. Uh, to me, they have great healing power just to have them in the room. But how did flowers come into being? You know, well, the creator of all that is thought that magnificent idea into physical form. It was a thought manifested into form. And so as the co-creators that we are, as the gods we are, the little mini gods that we are, it's really a marvel to consider all the things that humans have thought of, that humans have brought into form. You know, I was, I was contemplating what are the great creations of man or woman. And one of the great ideas was the wheel, the idea of the wheel. It began a very long time ago. It's dated back to 3500 BC, uh, and it changed the way we live. We put, we put wheels on carts behind horses, right? And then we eventually put them on big hunks of metal called cars. A telephone began as a thought. Now we, we've got some pretty fancy iPhones. Um, your computer that you're looking at, or maybe you're looking at your iPhone, that began as a thought. That was just a thought in somebody's mind. A piano that I'm playing, just a thought. That's what it started out as, a thought. So when we realize how everything begins with thought, we get a sense of the awesome power of thoughts to create form. Charles Fillmore, founder of Unity, he placed enormous attention on the law of mind action, that thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And the, the held in mind part is an important part. That means they have to be persistent, consistent thoughts. And when they're persistent, they permeate beyond the conscious mind into the subconscious, which is where we create from. So um, here's an example from my life of a persistent thought, a persistent thought that over time fully came into form. For about, uh, for about 20 years, um, back uh, in 1990 to about 2010, I toured the U.S. and I was singing and speaking at churches, Unity churches and New Thought churches all over uh, the country. And I was writing a lot of songs. I was recording um, a lot of CDs at that time. I think I recorded 12 sacred music CDs. And I was going about sharing this music at spiritual centers and retreats and workshops. And in fact, that's when I first came to Unity at the Lake. 
somewhere in the 90s. Well, somewhere around 2009, I started having this persistent thought, this persistent thought that just kept coming in. It just kept coming in. It was a thought that was held in my mind often. And the thought was, go to seminary, become a minister, settle down, and share ministry and music in one place. And it felt very spirit-guided. And because that thought was persistent, it outpictured. It outpictured through finding one spirit seminary and completing that seminary in 2012. And then some years, you know, becoming a minister at Unity of Lowerville for four years. And now, obviously, I'm here with you. So me being here with you now in this moment began as a thought. It was just a thought back in 2009. And it was a th persistent thought held in mind. So one of uh, Unity's ministers, Hypatia Hasbrook, uh, she wrote, she was a dean actually at the Unity School in Kansas City. She wrote an excellent book I highly recommend called Handbook of Positive Prayer. And in her book, she describes how we go from thought to form, from thought to creation. And she writes, this is, this is a really powerful little paragraph. She writes, if we persistently think a particular kind of thought, other thoughts of the same kind will form in our minds. And eventually, we will feel compelled to say the words or do the acts that express the thoughts outwardly so that corresponding conditions or things will be formed in us or in our environment. So it's a mouthful, but there's a lot there. Uh, in fact, we sent that quote out in the newsletter. Uh, it's so powerful. So in my example of persistent thought, you know, of, of holding a persistent thought of becoming a minister, the corresponding thoughts that I had were, well, I want to become a minister. I should study interfaith because I love the Eastern religions. You know, I, I love the truth that I can find in all religions. So, you know, a, pers a persistent thought gathers similar thoughts, and then we do the acts that express the thought outwardly. So the acts, the actions in my case were finding a seminary, signing up for seminary, taking the classes, doing the intensives, graduating, and getting a job as a minister. Another thing that happens when we have a persistent thought is we attract to ourselves or we're drawn to people and situations that will reflect our persistent thought, that will um, support our persistent thought. I remember when I was contemplating seminary, I would have these long discussions about it with Michael, Reverend Michael Moran, who founded Spiritual Life Center. He's a dear friend, and I used to stay with him and his wife, Faith, often when I was, when I was the guest at Spiritual Life Center. And so he was the one who su suggested One Spirit Seminary, and so I checked it out. And that led to meeting the founder of One Spirit, Diane Burke, who in our first conversation told me that she had been using my music for years in her seminary programs. So that just took the whole uh, creation to another level, where it really felt like a divine appointment. It felt so, so guided and so right. And everything was coming together. So I share this law of mind action, which actually Unity now refers to as a principle, principle of mind action, because it's really the foundation. It's like the core, essential foundation of Unity, of Unity's philosophy. And I know that you all are true students, and I know you're already familiar with this. But I think it's important to review it. I just found myself feeling like, what, what, what talk wants to come? What should I speak on? I think it's important right now, because with all that's happening in our world right now, I think our minds, you know, they tend to find too many reasons to think worrisome thoughts, which, of course, cause anxiety. And if we, if we allow our mind to persistently worry then we actually are giving attention and energy to outcomes we don't want to happen. We give energy to that possibility. So all we really need to do is we just need a little turning of the mind towards giving our attention to what is good 
and what good that we want to create in our lives. So positive prayer works because thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Think of all the things you've brought into being. You know, I'd love to hear some stories of the things that you've brought into being in your life. Maybe it was a career choice you chose. You know, maybe you studied for it and you became skilled at it and you created a job in that field. Maybe it was a place you dreamed of living uh, and you made that manifest. Lake Tahoe is pretty wonderful. Maybe it's a book you published. You know, I've been, uh, Carol sent me her wonderful book about her cats for Christmas and I've been loving that. Um, Maybe it's a CD you recorded. Um, maybe it's a relationship you created by thinking about a person you wanted to meet, by imaging that, imagining that. So we are creators. You know, the, the master blueprint is in us from the creator herself. You know, when we read the first chapter of Genesis, we see a map of how the principle of mind action works. It's a story of how God created the universe and all that it contains, including us. First, there is an idea. There is a thought in the vast, formless being that God is. And then there's a manifestation of that thought, of that idea. We read in Genesis uh, 126, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And God said, let us make woman in our image after our likeness. It's pretty amazing to realize that we are the stuff of infinite and unlimited consciousness. The creator gave us the consciousness, I am. I am. And whatever follows the I am that we are comes into being if we are persistent enough in our thinking. I am unlimited. I am well in every cell. I am love incarnate. I am an embodiment of light. <laughs> now, in all that we are endowed with, uh, we were given free will. So we can create however we wish, however we wish. We can explore from the darkest dark to the lightest light. You know, the creator allows us to choose. So we can create love stories or horror movies or anything in between. We can delve into darkness or we can seek out greater light. The choice is always ours. And we are loved every step of the way. That's the beauty of it. We are, we are held in unconditional love and given free will. So no matter what we choose to create, we are held in love. We can never be separate from love. We can believe that, but that doesn't make it true. So our free will allows us all experience. And I say that because a question that I've been asked as a minister more than once is, if God is absolute goodness, if God is infinite love, then why, tell me why is there this thing called evil in the world, or if you don't like that word, error. Why is there error? Why is there suffering? Why is there limitation? Why, why do people sometimes choose to express in dark ways, in unconscious ways? And I think, I think Jesus gave us guidance on this, gave us a clue when he said, God makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. That's from Matthew 5, 45. In other words, God's absolute goodness is impersonal. And so the principle of mind action operates impersonally. Infinite, loves, infinite love allows total free will. And so we get to explore what it is to be a creator. And we get to discover how our thoughts and how our energy and our vibration create. Um, Hypatia, in her book on positive prayer, compares human creativity um, and the human creative capacity to a computer. She says, you have to give the computer the right information if you want it to give you right solutions to problems. So, for example, you know, when you get on your computer uh, to find the distance between two cities, something I do often, you tell MapQuest the two cities you're driving to and from. 
and then it'll give you the correct miles and the time it takes to get from one city to the other. But if you if you give your computer the wrong city, say, you know, you're you want the distance to Jacksonville, Oregon, but you type in just Jacksonville or Jacksonville, Florida comes up, it'll give you the wrong mileage. So you have to be specific, you have to be clear, and you have to give it the right information. Your mind is like a computer in that way. So with this principle of mind action, um, it matters what information we put into our mind, what thoughts we're holding persistently in our mind. You've heard the saying, good stuff in, good stuff out, right? Garbage in, garbage out, same thing. Our mind feeds on information in the same way our body feeds on food, right? So if we put, if all we put into our body is donuts, what out pictures, it's not going to be good. <laughs> Oh, I have a sweet little um, goddaughter in my life, and I, I met her years ago while I was living in Oroville. And, you know, as I got to know her, I could tell that she didn't have, you know, a great living situation. Her parents were dealing with addiction. And um, so I started taking her to do fun things, things that I loved to do as a little girl. I, t I started taking her and her sister uh, to ride horses and go to museums and go roller skating and go bowling and go hiking and go camping and all these these great things. And I remember one time when we were camping, um, we woke up early in the morning and she was very chatty and she was asking me about boys, right? And we were talking about boys. And she said, at one point she said to me, you know, I'll be so lucky if anyone wants me, you know, but they probably won't, you know, so I'll just, I'll stick with the first boy that shows any interest, you know. And it was so obvious to me that she deeply believed that. And I, I just, I was astounded because she's so beautiful. And so I said, you know, oh, sweetheart, you know, you don't, you don't realize how beautiful you are. You know, and I realized that she, she had no idea that she was not only, you know, this beautiful little girl outwardly, but that she was kind. She was, she took good care of her little sisters. And she had this wonderful personality full of curiosity and creativity. So a child's mind is kind of like a computer, you know. It's, it's absorbing enormous input so it can understand the world. And if a child is, is told over and over, you are beautiful, you have light within you, you can create for yourself a happy and beautiful life full of love by loving yourself, by being kind to others? Well, that is good input. And, th and then with that input, they're likely to have confidence and believe in themselves and embrace life confidently. But, you know, if instead a child has repeatedly heard, you know, you're not good enough or you're not smart or you can't go to college, you know, we didn't go to college, you know, unfortunately, they will likely repeat that. And that will become a repetitive, persistent thought in their minds and that will create this belief of, of being in, inadequate. And then as adults, that outpictures um, the result of that thinking of not feeling good enough over and over, and often creating situations where that thought is affirmed. Um, so, you know, what has to happen is, is, is the realization that that belief of not being good enough, that's garbage. That is not true. And so we have to delete that from the mental hard drive, right? From our, from our mind, from our subconscious mind. And replace that untruth with the truth that we are a child of God. We actually have unlimited capacity and possibility. So good stuff in, good stuff out. Garbage in, garbage out. It works, it works every day, you know. And if we allow our minds to doubt our ability, we can, we can feel unsure of our place in the world. You know, if we allow our mind to remember that we are made in the image likeness of the creator that creates Casablanca lilies, <laughs> then we know we have enormous capacity for incredible creativity and goodness and light and blessing. So I know you all know this. I know I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, but if you're, if you're as human as I am, you know, you probably still sometimes deal with doubt, with doubt, self-doubt at times. 
So, you know, back to my example of myself um, with that persistent thought of becoming a minister. When, I was, when that thought arose, it was 2009. And if you remember 2009, there was a housing market crash, it took a nosedive. And I, at that time, happened to have all my money tied up in real estate. So I lost a lot of money. And um, my mind, as it was mulling the high cost of seminary, it had the thought, the thought arose, you, you know, you can't, you really can't afford this now. You, you know, you should wait a while or maybe you should think of something else. And so that doubting thought, you know, I gave it a little space in my mind. I thought about it briefly. But then I just denied that thought any further space in my mind. And I just had faith. I had this strong feeling that it was going to work out and that I refused to let doubt get in the way. And that, you know, the guidance that I kept feeling was just start, just start. You'll find the way to finance seminary. And so um, that brings me to the other really important principle of positive prayer, which is using denial and affirmation, something I, I know you, you've heard of. When a thought appears, <coughs> when a thought appears that's doubting, that's negative, that takes your energy, drains your energy, that's self-defeating, we can use denials, which is the other side of the coin of affirmations. And I want to I want to just uh, clarify that using denial doesn't mean being in denial. You know, we don't deny that negative appearances exist. Like, for instance, you know, the reality that seminary is twenty five thousand and I have eight thousand in the bank. You know, can't can't deny that, right? But what I could deny, what I can deny is that that has power over me because I know there's abundance in the universe and I know spirit will guide me in manifesting it. So we, we declare the unreality and the powerlessness of the appearance, of the appearance. So I might say the lack of money is powerless to keep my good from me. That's the denial. And then I affirm I have the capacity to serve, to bless others, and to receive abundance that will carry me through seminary with grace and ease. Hypatia uh, describes an all-purpose denial as, this is powerless to take or keep my good from me. This is powerless to keep my good from me. If we're healing, if we're in a process of bringing healing to our body, we might say, this situation in my body is powerless to take or keep my healing and health from me. We deny the power of the dis-ease, okay? And then we affirm. You want to replace a denial. It like creates space. It creates a little void. And you fill that with the affirmation. So for healing, it might be the healing power of the divine love flows in and through me now. And it restores the health and the well-being of my genius cells, of my body, to wholeness and perfection. So, you know, I know there is there's a lot of appearance of illness going around. And so I'd, I'd like us to affirm health and healing uh, right now, collectively, and let the power of our united um, thought and energy for healing just radiate out to anyone who needs it anywhere. So I'd like to share some affirmations and uh, I invite you to repeat them. And Karen, um, if you would unmute um, and be our voice, that would be wonderful. And I think Glenn will also post these affirmations in the chat if you want to see them. And I invite you to repeat uh, after me. Are you there, Karen? I'm here. Okay, wonderful. Ah, so, with my heart open to spirits renewing love, I accept my healing now. With my heart open to spirits renewing love, I accept my healing now. I am healthy and whole because I am one with spirits healing, revitalizing presence. I am healthy and whole because I am one with spirit's healing, revitalizing presence. 
I am created in the image of God, blessed with strength and wholeness. I am created in the image of God, blessed with strength and wholeness. The power of God sustains and blesses me with perfect health. The power of God sustains and blesses me with perfect health. I have instant access to God's healing power within me. I have instant access to God's healing power within me. I am whole and well in mind, body, and spirit. I am whole and well in mind, body, and spirit. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Letting those genius cells just vibrate with healing light, that infinite consciousness that can spontaneously heal. It is so powerful. Letting that healing light radiate in our entire body, mind, spirit. So in closing, let us remember how important it is that we're vigilant in what thoughts we persistently think. You know, we are creating every moment with our thoughts. Let us use denial when appearances might create doubt and worry and keep our faith, keep our faith strong and alive and affirm that we create a life we love. We create a life we love. Take that with you today. We create a life we love. I create a life I love. We bless and we are a blessing. We are healing and we are whole. And for this, we are grateful. And so it is. Thank you all. Thank you, God. Amen. <laughs>